Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to the next part of this video series. Um, in the last part we stopped at this point where we were able to output our posts in a very simple way, just lining them up beneath each other. And now in this video we're going to add a dummy navigation bar and tune the styling a little bit and then we will make sure that we organize our files and our templates a little bit better. So let's get into it. Back in our editor, you can uh, see the point where we left. And what I first want to do is add a dummy navigation bar or, or more the, the space where the actual navigation bar will live in the future at the top of our body section. Um, therefore, I just add a menu div, some menu links. Uh, so there won't be actual links as of now, but don't worry, we'll get there soon. And now it's time for some styling. Therefore, let me just add another section to this document, the main section where our posts will live. Oops, that does not work in Cloud9. Let's do it this way. And ident this so that it is well organized and now it's time to go into our style.css and actually write some CSS code instead of just um, our theme description. So first I'll style the body section a little bit. Um, I'll remove all padding and margin it has by default. I'll set the for family to Helvetica area and sans serif as last fallback. Set the font size to 16 pixels. I want to change the font size of our h1 and h2 tags. So h1 will have a font size of let's say 28 pixels and h2 will get 26. I want the main section to have a margin of 32 pixels to all sides and the menu bar for the moment will only receive a light background color so that we can clearly see it. Background color of light blue and it should also get some padding. So let's say 16 pixels from top and bottom and 32 pixels from left and right. We, my thing we could do is add um, just this line of code, adding our style sheet, saving it and then refreshing our website. But as you can see, nothing changed and this is the reason. Because in this view here, it seems like all we would have to do is refer to style.css as it's in the same folder. But you have to think of it in a different way. When WordPress displays a view, it uses our theme, but the actual directory it is in is another directory because we're running the WordPress application. All we're going to do is fetching some PHP files, but our links here, which are relative links, might and will not be correct there anymore. And therefore we have to use a different technique. And I will use one where we create an extra file, the functions.php. This is a file we will need anyway. And it's a good technique to load resources we need. So how am I going to do this? I'm just creating a function within this file. Function load theme resources. And Mm, PHP, okay. Function load theme resources. And inside this function, I only call one built in WordPress function, which is WP for WordPress and Q style. Now, the name of our style.css is style.css we leave out the css part and then get 
style sheet URI. So what this line of code will do is find the style sheet, add it to the head of our WordPress site. And as we added this hook here, it will get injected into all sites or pages um, provided by our theme so that we have our styles available on each of them. Okay. Now, this won't load the function or the, the, the style sheet yet because um, the function is never called. So we have to do this. And therefore, we have to use the built-in WordPress function add action, which basically says add this action to your queue of actions and execute it whenever um, you're, you're there, but definitely before the page is loaded. This function takes is the parameter of the type of action and it should enqueue script and the script to enqueue is the load theme resources function. Now with this we're ready to go and when we now refresh our site we should see that the layout has changed or the styling. Yeah, looks nice. Okay, now to wrap this video up um, I'm going to do something very important. I'm going to reorganize our, our skeleton here, our template, the, the index.php is our template where we display the data. Because right now we got everything inside index.php, but um, we will have uh, soon, but we will soon have different templates for different parts of our page, for example, for our About Us page, we might want to use a different template than for our blog index. And this might differ from our single blog post template. And therefore we need to split this up so we have reusable code and uh, don't um, repeat ourselves everywhere. Therefore, I'm going to create three extra PHP files right now. The header.php will hold our header, including the navigation. The footer.php will obviously hold our footer and the content.php will hold our post content here. And um, how am I going to do this? It's very, very simple actually. First, I'm going to copy or cut the part uh, of the content and insert it into our content.php. PHP. Um, yeah, now that, let's beautify that a little bit. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So this is um, our content. PHP. And inside our index.php, we now have to tell WordPress, okay, the content is in a different file, go fetch it. So in our index.php, we now have to tell WordPress where it finds our content. And we do this in a WordPress PHP function, which is get template part. And we want to get the content because the file is content.php. And if we now refresh our web page, we'll see that nothing changes and this is good because actually the content didn't change, we just restructured it so we don't want it to change, right? And now we're going to do the same for the header and the header will not just include our navigation here but everything of the beginning of the um, index.php file. So just from the declaration of our HTML type um, until the end of our navigation bar. And the footer is just our WP footer function. And I'm going to outsource this to into a footer.php file. So inside our index.php file, we now want to add a PHP function at the top, which is called get header. Don't mistake that for WP head. This is the function get header, which will automatically load our header.php file into this file. 
And therefore, obviously, it's important that you keep the declarations. You can't rename your files whatever you want because WordPress is going to look for them in a specific order. And specifically, header and footer should, name be, should be named header and footer.php. So here we have the get footer equivalent. And again, if we reload, nothing should change. Cool. So now we got this very simple template, but I just saw this should also be part of the footer because it closes the document. So let's do this and then reorganize it. Okay, now this is the state where I'll leave you and I hope you find this uh, interesting too. It in the next video, we're going to actually provide a real navigation bar. I hope to see you soon. Have a nice day. This is Max.